Electrical engineering and computer engineering are two very similar majors. This video goes over the other side of the spectrum from the computer science and computer engineering video that I did. So let's just dive into the curriculum to begin and see their similarities. First off, they both take the first programming course, where you learn all the basics of how to code and make basic programs. This is normally the C programming language, because that's the language used for programming hardware in the embedded systems class that I'll talk about later. If you've seen our other videos, you know both majors take a few circuit analysis courses to get you familiar with resistor, capacitor, and inductor circuits, and you basically learn how to set up and solve equations for any type of circuit you may encounter with these three components. The hardest part of these classes is setting up the equations based on the circuits you're given. They both take a signals course where they learn about the math behind signals and how to mathematically represent them as a sum of different sine waves, which is a very important concept. This is one of the most math intensive classes for both majors. They both take some electronics where they learn what a transistor is because that's what's used in computers that switch from a high voltage to a low voltage or vice versa very quickly, which is then read as ones and zeros. So it's very obvious why computer engineers would have to learn this as well. This is basically circuit analysis, but with transistors in the circuit as well, but it's a very similar amount of work and amount of math. They both take an embedded systems class, which again is about using something like an Arduino to create projects. With most of the projects you could work on, you have to know circuit analysis, but also programming to tell the device what to do based on the inputs it gets from the circuits or hardware. This is one big reason electrical engineers learn programming to begin with. It's not the only time they use it, but it's one of the key classes where you use programming. But now let's look at their differences. Electrical engineers take a power class, where they learn about electric motors and generators. Electrical engineers take a class on communications, specifically AM and FM radio waves. Remember I said in the signals class, you learn how signals can be made up of sine functions, and you learn how to mathematically represent those? Well, in this communications class, you apply that knowledge specifically to AM and FM radio waves. As you can see, those are obviously sinusoidal in a way, and they have a changing amplitude for the AM wave and a changing frequency for the FM wave. You'll learn the math behind those signals and their equations. Electrical engineers apply that signals class more than computer engineers do. Electrical engineers also take more electronics. For example, they might see an analog electronics class where computer engineers would not. The basics of analog electronics is making amplifier circuits, so you could put in a signal and get a stronger one out. This circuit could be used for a speaker, a hearing aid, or amplifying signals coming in from satellites in deep space. Digital electronics is what computer engineers and electrical engineers would take. So kind of going back to their similarities, I've said before there are hundreds of millions of logic gates in our computers. They take inputs of ones and zeros and then output ones and zeros as well. The simplest one being a NOT gate. This takes in a one and outputs a zero or takes in a zero and outputs a one. But now you know that ones are actually just a high voltage like five volts and zeros are just a low voltage like zero volts. This is what's actually happening within a logic gate. So what circuits can change from five volts to zero volts and vice versa? This is what digital electronics is about, analyzing the circuits that actually make up a logic gate. A resistor circuit won't do this for those who have learned about circuits, but a transistor circuit can. Input five volts and you can get zero volts out on this node and vice versa. So you see the differences? Digital electronics is about learning logic gate circuits and how to change from high to low or low to high voltages. Analog electronics is about usually sinusoidal voltages and manipulating those often by amplification. Same principles in both classes, lots of transistor circuits, same amount of math, just different purposes. And lastly, electrical engineers take electromagnetism courses. These are huge for students wanting to go into RF or radio frequency, the wireless communications concentration. This is where you learn how to represent electromagnetic waves mathematically, and you do a lot of physics. You learn how electromagnetic waves interact with different materials, how they are transmitted versus reflected through different mediums and at barriers, how electric and magnetic fields are formed, and so on. If you've seen the physics versus electrical engineering video, then you know this class on electromagnetism is one of the big things that those two majors have in common. They don't take the exact same classes, but they are similar. Now computer engineers take just a few more programming courses. They learn more than just one programming language, like they learn Java and or Python on top of learning C. These courses will take you through some more programming syntax and you'll start to learn a little about algorithms. 
like maybe an algorithm to sort a list of numbers in order as quickly and efficiently as possible. You don't learn as much about algorithms as computer scientists, but you do learn some. They take discrete math, which is unlike the math you are used to in high school or beginning college. It's all about equations where the variables can only assume discrete values and looking at graph theory and how things are related, whether it be how computer networks are connected, all the way to how people are matched on a dating site and how to connect them to each other. There are a lot of proofs and I go into some detail in the computer science videos. They also take a computer architecture class. As I've said, this is all about learning about the central processing unit and really diving into what's happening inside a computer and how instructions are being moved throughout it. They could also see a computer networks class where you learn the computer network architecture. Computer networks are essentially a bunch of computers connected together to share resources. An example would be sharing a connection to the internet all the way to sharing a printer. As you can imagine, the routing and transfer of data can become very complicated. And I'll stop there. So let's see this all together. Electrical engineers and computer engineers both take an intro programming class. They take some circuits classes, some electronics classes, a signals class, and an embedded systems class. Then electrical engineers take a class on power systems, AM and FM communication, more electronics classes like analog electronics, and one or two classes on electromagnetic waves and high frequency systems while computer engineers take a few more programming classes that include other programming languages. They take discrete math, but it won't be applied so much unless you take certain elective classes, computer architecture, and also computer networks. Now, as I normally do, I wanna answer who uses more math. And the answer here is definitely electrical engineers. The communications class uses math concepts from the signals class, which requires calculus 1 and 2. The electromagnetism classes also require calculus 1, 2, and 3. Then all the other classes just involve a lot of systems of equations. The computer engineering classes use math, but it's less than the electrical classes, and you really won't use calculus in those. Even in discrete math, which is of course math intensive, you really don't use calculus level math, although it is still a challenging subject. And of course, there are more classes and electives I didn't talk about, but you can probably see the differences already. So now in terms of careers. An electrical engineer could get a job working on satellite antennas and communication, where they test the signal strength over various angles and ensure the antenna meets specifications and can communicate properly and securely. They could work on solar energy and converting light into electric power to be distributed to our homes. They could get a job at an electric power company and work on power distribution and generation. Or they could design the electronics and power systems that go into electric vehicles. Then a computer engineer could work on cybersecurity and performing tests for vulnerability in a certain system for the government, as an example. They could help improve the efficiency, speed, and power consumption of integrated circuits used in computer systems. They could work on simulation software for defense purposes, like with aircrafts, missiles, and radar systems. Computer engineers could get jobs in computer vision. Maybe a surveillance camera needs to count how many people have walked through a certain area. Computer vision would be needed for this, so maybe you could recognize objects or shapes. This can also be used in navigation, facial recognition, detection, like maybe for medical images to detect problematic cells, tracking of movement, or reconstructing images that maybe are blurry or have been subject to interference. I also looked up some senior projects to help show some of the differences. I found that computer engineering students made a system to detect network intrusions where alerts would be sent if suspicious traffic appeared on a given network. They made a Bluetooth operated padlock where they had to worry about encryption and security and communication between the lock and the phone as well as power consumption and energy efficiency. Or they made a quadcopter that could be controlled by a phone that would also implement GPS, data storage, and more using Wi-Fi or a 4G connection. Whereas electrical engineers made a camera stabilizer that would compensate for shaky motion using motors and microcontrollers. Or a signal jammer that would block frequencies coming from a certain transmitter. And also solar powered streetlights that track sunlight for maximum energy while reducing the amount of energy used from the electric grid. I even found one for smart weights, which would record and analyze your workout routine. Now, a lot of these projects I came across included both majors. So again, it's not so black and white what one certain major can work on over the other. I saw both majors working on a sense and avoid UAV project where they had to make a drone avoid obstacles automatically. 
but the computer engineers worked on the sense and avoid system and how to program the UAV to maneuver based on the sensor data, while the electrical engineering team worked on the wireless communications and sending data securely from the drones down to the ground station. So hopefully you now have an idea of the similarities and differences in the two majors and what kind of jobs both disciplines would be more favored for. A lot of jobs can be interchangeable, but I wanted to give you an idea of how one discipline could be more qualified than the other for certain positions. And lastly, as always, make sure you realize that every school is different, so be sure to look into what the curriculum will be like for the schools you're looking into. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.